Hey YouTube, this is a Cisco 800A router that I took from site yesterday. It's no longer powering on, as you can see. So today, we're going to try and fix it. So when I checked the fuse on this plug, the fuse inside this, which was a 10 amp fuse, was actually blown. However, I replaced the fuse on it and plugged it in and it blew again immediately. So this kind of gave me the indication that there was a serious short circuit on the board. Now this Cisco 800A is powered by an external 18 volt DC power adapter. So the first thing we need to confirm is, is there any voltage coming from this? So I'm going to take you through my procedure of how I safely test one of these uh, power supplies. Now most of these AC to DC converters that come with Cisco devices, laptops, mobile phones, pretty much everything, have one of these coax ends on them. Now there's two contacts on this, there's a center and there's the outer. And generally speaking, the outer is a cold or negative, and the inside is the hot or positive. But if you're in any ambiguity about this, it's written on the case. Generally, anyway. So you can see it over here. You've got the plus and the negative, and it indicates which one is the center and which one is the outer. First thing I like to do is just to plug it out so that I can get everything in position to test it. The second step is to get your multimeter and switch it to volts DC. Step three. Connect the red probe to the center pin of the adapter. Step four is to connect the black probe to the outside of the DC coax cable. I like to do this using crocodile clips because it helps hold the probe better in position. Step five is to switch the power on. And as you can see, when I switch the power on, there is no voltage across these pins, so there is obviously a problem with the power supply itself. So we will need to get the power supply out of its case so that we can take a look at it better. Now when you take the circuit board out of the enclosure, it's very, very important to discharge the filter capacitor because there can be up to 330 volts across this. And my preferred method of doing this is to connect a bulb across it so that the capacitor will discharge itself across the bulb. Now when I have discharged the large filter capacitor, I like just to confirm that there is no voltage still sitting across it. So I get my multimeter, set it to DC volts, and connect across it like this, black probe to negative, red probe to positive. Now we can see there that there is exactly zero volts across the filter capacitor. I would have expected that there would have been some voltage still left across it, so what I'm thinking now is that it may actually be shorted. And I did notice, just as I was taken out of the box, and you may be able to see this a bit clearer here. There does seem to be a bit of damage to the main filter capacitor when I zoom in on it. I suspect that this filter capacitor is shorted so I'm going to take it off the board and test it off the board and we'll take it from there. Okay so this is the capacitor I've taken off the board. I just want to test it independently out of the circuit. And what I can see is that it is certainly shorted. So we have one bad filter capacitor at least. So what I'm going to do is I've got another one of these from an old laptop power supply. I'm going to put it on the board and we're going to take it from there. Okay, so we've replaced the capacitor. This was the old capacitor, which is a 47 microfarad 400 volt capacitor. And I've got a 120 microfarad 400 volt capacitor from a laptop power supply and put this in instead. So what I would do at this stage would be just to check, of course, to make sure that there's no longer a short across this. So there's no short across there. I would also check across here to make sure there's no shorts across the MOSFET. And you can also test across the bridge rectifier and just fuses and other things as well. 
but at this stage I will be ready to plug it in and test it. Okay, after replacing the filter capacitor we're pretty much ready to go to test this again. I have a bit of short circuit uh, protection in this just to stop it in case it will blow up again, but I'll show you that in another video. This is me powering it on. And we have lights this time. Okay, so that looks good. It looks like we've got power to the unit. It seems like just that one filter capacitor was blown and that's what was causing the problem. That was a pretty easy fix. Normally it would have more components blown with it, but I guess it's good to have an easy start. Please add all your comments and opinions and anything at all you have to say below. And thanks for watching.